most amazing part of this journey is watching how far I've came. I've seen people I looked up to and I was inspired by. Icons now showing me respect. Some of the biggest legends that this culture has to offer embracing me. I credit it all to relationships. Some of these legends even became big brothers to me. I've watched some of my peers become superstars in their own right. Some of the heaviest figures in other genres have embraced me. I've been thrown into some awkward situations at times. I've always landed on my feet. But I've prided myself at being one of the personalities that's not scared to be outside. I think that's what helped my interviews. I've been able to interview some of the newest rising stars, some of the biggest artists in the game, to even the legends. The topics change, but the respect doesn't. Sometimes we watch relationships come full circle. <laughs> I've watched my relationships take me around the world. I've DJed in front of 20,000, 30,000 plus many of times. But I think that's the game changer right there. That perspective when you stand on that stage and you see those thousands of people, it gives you a new vantage point, gives you a new eye line, gives you new opinions. And with that being said, I'm here to speak them all. It's the Truth Heard Podcast. You're welcome. That boy Punch. Long overdue. It's been a while. True first podcast. Um it's been a long, it's been a long couple of months. Uh to jump straight into it. My YouTube was disabled. Okay. My whole YouTube channel was disabled. I was going through some back and forth issues with a very, very big company. Uh I I, I I'd consider it that they're digitally bullying. Um and they basically put a freeze on my account. I wasn't able to upload anything for almost a year. Um, and now I finally got my page back. They took like all the ad revenue. They took everything. Uh, I can't fight it. YouTube deemed it to be theirs. They said that they had content in there that is theirs. What can Little Low Punch do? I can't do everything. I can't fight every single war. You know, all I just will say is this is... Every YouTuber, every artist trying to vlog, everybody on the come up, just <laughs> stay away from the music, stay away from major, major artists at times, because they have these big companies and big uh, corporations that are behind them, and if at any time you and a major partnership doesn't work out, uh, you can be spited really hard. And if you're on the smaller spectrum of you versus a company or a label, trust me, you'll probably get the short end of the stick. But um, straight off of that, I'm just happy to be back. Uh, it feels refreshing to, to, to speak back to the people. Shouts to everybody who subscribed. Shouts to everybody. Please drop a comment. I got to get on my YouTube and stuff. Subscribe. Uh, hit the like button. Do whatever you're going to do. I just want you to react. Share it. Let's do it. I'm here to talk the truth, and it hurts sometimes. Basically, I'm going to piss people off. Sometimes. It's it's inevitable. I tell my people all the time, whenever you pick a side, someone on the other side is frustrated you didn't pick theirs. It's just how life is. I can't please everyone. It's impossible to. And if you make everybody happy, that means you ride in the fence too often, and I'd rather not. So to just jump into the present moment, we're in the middle of the corona epidemic uh, corona pandemic, pardon, and everyone is stuck in the house, everyone is locked inside, and, um, let me just check, yeah, everyone's locked inside, and one thing that keeps happening now is Insta-lives, and everyone's going live, and all the creators and the, uh, influencers, for lack thereof, artists, they're all going live, everyone's utilizing Instagram live to tap in with the fans. Now, I was a little annoyed of it at first until I just was like, yo, I just got to jump in. I got to have some conversations too. Why not? And uh, I think one of the big conversations I had that caught a little, a couple of eyes was me and the, and, and the brother say cheese. Um, and we were just talking about oil. We were talking about loyalty within artists. We were talking about how artists that need help on the come up. Cause I think that say cheese and I have similarities with mirrored, you know, say cheese is super big in the South, you know, I hold, I, I hold my weight and my status in, uh, up top. And we went through similar roller coasters where you co-sign an artist, you help, you help develop the brand, and then push come to shove. They make 10, 20,000, and they're not responding the same. I think we've all seen 
uh, artist that even the fans can tell. You know, you DM an artist that responds to the responsive. As soon as it picks up, they try to tell the whole they're super busy stuff. But exactly what you said, when a nigga gets $10,000, $20,000 and they can put that cash in their hand. Yeah. It is a different rapper. It's a different person. Yeah. Because they're not used to that kind of access to bread. They're not used to that kind of access to pussy. And they're not right. used to that kind of access to fame. Exactly. And it changes up real quick. Exactly. And when niggas get money, it's like then all the people come around them and make them feel untouchable and superior. Oh, oh that's a fact. To, to where though a nigga can't even you can't even put if, if your nigga is up twenty thousand and you try to put him in check, like yo, humble yourself, he cut you off. Hundred percent. Because the yes men become so valuable to them. Because in their mind, psychologically, what happens is is that I'm the one who did this. If 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 you telling me I'm not, how I got this money then? Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. How I got this money if what I'm doing ain't right. Exactly. And they don't want to live. <laughs> exactly. And I want to just remind everybody, like, if you're dealing with an artist and your artist is successful, they're not busy 24 hours of the day. Like, they're just really not. Rap doesn't work like that. Like, most of the time, these rappers are just in their new crib and they're just chilling. Like, what does a rapper really do? If you have a hit record, what are you doing? They're not recording all day long because you watch when they're vlogging, when they're recording, and it's at night in the middle, bringing other art artists, drinking, smoking, doing typical rapper shit. Now, I just hate when rappers start to, you know, misbehave and come out of their character because they got the access to money. You know, I've had artists that would call me every single day. The second they got their deal, it's like their number changed. You know what I mean? It's... It's whack, it's corny, and if they doing it to the influencers and the people and the DJs, the media personalities, the people that are actually like game changing in their path, I can only imagine how frustrating it is for the fans. So me and Say Cheese just got into a great conversation back and forth, just talking about that. Um, and then came this really, really big conversation that's kind of going real viral right now, which made me be like, yo, I want to get back to work and um, get this moving. And get this active. And it is about New York drill versus Chicago drill versus UK drill. What does it mean? Who started it? Who deserves the props? So let's get this kicked off. Hold on. Let me get a let me get a drink of water. Cause this is gonna be something. Shout out to my boy D DJ Damage. You know, he's always been like punch. Get the podcast back moving. So shout out to DJ Damage. But Queens Flip, my dogs. If y'all seen the interview of me and Queens Flip, it was earlier this year. Just hit it up. It's on the Quiet Room page. Uh, YouTube search Queens Flip Punch. It'll pop up. So we did an interview early in the spring. Um, Flip and I, we knew each other for years. Wanted to come up in New York. And now Flip's platform is really, really big. You know, over half a million followers on the gram. Shout out to my bro Flip. Uh, jumped on the live, and me and him just started talking about the difference between OGs and dinosaurs. Because... In a lot of topics and a lot of back and forth that we speak of, we always talk about, yo, young versus old. Yo, who's the one that's clogging up the holes? Who's the one that's blocking all the artists? We think of this all the time, and all we talk about constantly is who is the one hating on the artist to grow? And as fans and as supporters, everybody knows that you just want your artist to blow up. Everybody knows. They're like, yo, I want my artist to be the number one. Yo, why is nobody listening to my favorite rapper? What's going on? They're hating. And then that's what everybody's stance is. But the reality at hand is this. Being a part of Viral Moments is dope. You know, I think that they starting to understand that all of the old, because we're looking, all the old guys, all the old media personalities, they're not talking too much. They're quiet right now. Yeah. Or the or the young guys taking advantage of it all. So you know I'm, you know what time I'm on. I love that. So when I see you at the top of the headlines, I'm always happy for it. Eventually the tides is going to change. I mean you know we gotta we got we gotta come in the best way we can, man. These people don't believe in helping or lifting each other up. You know it's a lot Who's of these people. Again. The people in the higher situation. The dinosaurs. I'm not getting into that. No, because I want to, you know, we got to clear it up. Because a lot of people think it's about old against young. It's not. Okay, it's about what is it about? People who ready for change and dinosaurs. Dinosaurs are people that do they way, do it their way, and, they, and they're going to do it their way until they die. Until they I think it's about who's in position of power. If there were more people that were a part of my generation that were in power, artists would be moving much faster. See, the problem at hand is this. 
It's the dinosaurs. And let me explain specifically what a dinosaur is. A dinosaur is someone who is stuck in their ways for so long that they refuse to change. They have a position of power and they will stay in that exact position doing the exact same behavior that they did until they go extinct. Now, we are watching program directors, we're watching radio, we're watching label heads, we are watching dinosaurs. Now, that is different than an OG, you know what I mean? I also got on a live this week with Mano, and Mano and me was back and forth and talking, and Mano is an OG. It's a different thing. So it's not just about age, because you could be a dinosaur younger than Mano. It ain't really about nothing, but Mano jumps on and was like, yo, Punch, my role is to be the OG. My role is to help inform and teach and give a pathway to all the artists and all the young DJs and talents coming through the city on how to do it, what's the best way to do it, and how to get the money. Now, that's what an OG does. An OG want to teach you how to go get the paper, teach you how to get this moving, versus how a dinosaur would do. A dinosaur don't want you to come in. A dinosaur would try to make you do all of that little kid stuff, like, yo, go get me food, or, oh, you an intern? Yeah, go, go. Go get everybody drinks. You know, go do Doja stuff versus trying to really get in the game and teach you something. And we all know that the, the people who want you to do the whole, yeah, you got to slave your way to the top. We all hate those guys. Those are the dinosaurs. Those are the people that's destroying the culture because they don't want nothing to grow. They don't want anything to change. So that's what I was speaking about, the dinosaurs versus the OGs. It started to get this whole convo, flipping now, we start talking, and then comes the elephant in the room, flip. What do you feel about Chirac? What do you feel about Young Chop? Because Young Chop was on his live going crazy the day before, talking about how everybody not giving him his credit, and then he starts calling everybody scary. We've seen it. Now, I've heard people say that Young Chop going crazy. I've heard people saying that Young Chop is taking pills. I've heard people saying Young Chop is totally sane, and I've heard people saying that Young Chop is trying to troll. I don't know what's happening, but let's just start with the topic at hand. We can't take away what Young Chop did. <laughs> Now, how I first heard of Young Chop was being the producer and the lead frontman for the whole sound of the whole Chirac drill movement. You get me? Now let's talk about the drill movement. To my, to my knowledge, the drill movement comes basically off of like the street rap records that everything was coming out of Chicago, led by Lil Reese, led by Lil Durk, and of course, Chief Keef. That's how it looked from the outside in, and that's how it looked in. And, of course, they got SD, they had Fredo, they had a bunch of people in the first wave. That's how it looked at from an outsider. Like, okay, that's what's going on in drill. And Young Chop and Bandcamp, who I later found out was um, someone with Ferris Bueller, who Young Chop gave credit to on the live as well, who Chop and them partnered up, and they was working on creating the sound for all of the artists at the same time. So... All props to them. This is how we've seen it. Now, New York, at this exact time, we don't really got too much moving. You know, we, we bubbling. It ain't nothing happening. After about a couple months of Chirac developing, and that's came to um, the Us record with Lil Reese, which obviously got Drake and Rick Ross on it. That was huge. But then Def Jam left them in the water once that video came out of him and the girl because that record was going to be huge. A lot of people thought Reese was going to be the biggest one out of the market. Then came This Ain't What You Want, while all of this is going on, I don't like, you know what I mean, is going crazy. And Chief Keef is just bubbling and everybody's looking at the videos and the visuals. I taught niggas how to make the type of beat. Am I lying? I don't know who you taught. Can you explain, Chop? All right. I taught Paris Bueller because I was affiliated with Bandcamp. That's why the tag was on my beat. But it was never about him. It was about the other one, Pumac, our homie. He the one like, yo, you want to be down with the squad? You know, I'm loyal as hell, so I'm hell yeah, you know? They got studios and shit. I show the nigga the sound. He trying to say he made the sound. Like, let's be 100, bro. Then he talking about my brother. Like, my brother ain't make shit up. <laughs> like, I really use this, like, and I don't understand why niggas don't get chopped his credit. That's another thing that came from this, the way that we were looking at these guys doing a million, two, three million views of videos just in their crib because a lot of them had, you know what I mean, to my knowledge, they had like the ankle monitors and all of that. They said Keith was, 
like living with his grandmother or something now. He was young. I think he was like 15, 16 years old. This all makes sense. Now, this is all about, <clears throat> this is all about a young dude and a young clique and a young team putting together, doing what they can do to like blow up. Now, that's fair, and I rock with it. We loved it. The whole country was a lord. You get what I mean? I got mad family in the West Coast, and then everybody in New York, I seen what was going on. Everybody was rocking with Chief Keith. We, we, we co-signed the slang. We rocking with it. Y'all had the wave. I look at like every city catches the glow. Chicago had the glow. Cool. While that goes on, we start bubbling up, and then comes GS9. GS9 starts bubbling up, and of course, the first pop out of GS9, Rowdy Rebel with the shmoney dance. That record goes super viral. The video of them dancing in the street, going wild, going crazy. Everybody seeing Bobby. That's the first time we seen Bobby. And then literally a couple weeks after that, Bobby drops Hot Nigga. And then we watched how that went straight to the billboard. Cool. I'll give you an example. When Chicago first started, they the first niggas that were talking. And this is, and this is, and again, because as soon as I talk, let me get this. I want the words to come out super clear because y'all niggas will, will change it around. Chicago was the first niggas to directly start speaking about literally the crimes that they were doing. Like, yo, we gonna spin Tom's block today and we gonna hit Kevin. You get me? And then the next week, Kevin is there. Yo, they spun Kevin's block. I'm gonna go boom Tom. That's where that whole back and forth, saying names, being that bold, that started with the Chicago shit. Now, there might be a rapper somewhere else, nobody at me. The wave and that popularity came from Chicago. So that's what I feel like is the, is the, is the source of what drill music is. When Chicago started to really go crazy and everybody was rocking with it, I think that we was allured by what was going on in Chicago because a lot of people were just in shock. To my knowledge, straight up and down, people were in shock. And we were like, yo, these young... Like, these young dudes are going to put themselves in jail. There's no way, because it's seeming like y'all just rapping about, like, the street stuff that y'all doing. It's like, I'm going to talk about the crime we did two days ago. And we like, yo, bro, they not scared of jail. We hearing, they like, yo, we about to go do something to Tom. And then all of a sudden, Tom's block is spun. The next week, Tom is like, we going to do something to Steve. The next week, Steve block is spun. Now, as an outsider, we looking at this like, yo, these kids is crazy. They're going to go to jail. This is, there's no way that they're going to get out of this. They're all going to go to jail. They're all talking about what's going on. they literally talking about the shootings they're doing. There's no way that this is going to last. But somehow, most of the rappers stayed clear. Now, that whole type of style, that drill, like the content of what drill is, I think that influenced New York the most to where it's like, yo, Chicago ain't the only hood out here. Like other people is gangsters, other people's in the street. Other people is extremely influenced with what goes on on ground level as well. So that's what I feel like got the most push for New York to be like, all right, cool, we could do that too. We could rap about drilling, we could rap about spinning blocks, we could rap about everything that you can. And then came the authenticity and when we was here in GS9 and they was rapping exactly what they was doing. And then everybody was going crazy and then Bobby took it up a level and was naming his boys and naming everything like fire, right? Everybody's going crazy like, oh, I know son, oh, I know this, oh, I know that, oh, that's a fact. And then everybody just fell in love with GS9 as a wave. So we were able to just kind of take that shit. And then also, our style of video started changing the way that, you know, New York, we get money city, number one. Number two, what we are is we like to have fun. We in the street, how it is outside in the 90s, in the hundreds where I'm from, all of this. Like, we just outside. So then you started to see the elements of what GS9 brought on camera, which was the wild dance and everybody turning up in the middle of the street, jumping on cars, People never seen that before prior to us. We was the ones that was really doing it. Now, this is usually the point where a hater goes and pulls out one video where someone's doing it. I'm talking about the majority. I'm talking about the masses, right? There's someone that's always going to be able to create something else, even when, no matter what goes on, someone else has invented another version. We got it. But are the you pattern saying is that the same, no? Are you saying that computers is influenced from the Chicago? Yes, that's how I'm saying right And I'll now, say yeah. this. I'll say this. If it is cool what drill grew to become the sound that it developed to is drastically different than how it sourced from i you get what i'm saying so i, I don't want to dwell it like this sounds like this is not like this if computer sounds like a chief keith record which i don't agree but there's certain sounds <laughs> that it used both beats <coughs> the drum both beats that i can't argue that i can't argue i'm not arguing with you, 
the drum patterns and the snares are the same to me. Cool, but with that being said, let me ask you a question. Yes. If they drew it, if they, if, and let me ask you this. Niggas be using the word, like there's inspiration and there's biting. What's the difference between inspiration and biting? I think that this beat. No, well, fuck the beat. Know. I'm just asking the definitions of the words. What's, I I, I, what's biting I think, and what's. Okay. First of all, what we gotta, what we gotta understand, Punch, is that when you, when you talk about something like that, when you come, cause you, you, you spoke person for Brooklyn. You just, not the spoke person, but you came and you spoke, right? Now, when a guy yeah. like me come on here and I play something and I hear something similar, just give me a second. One is faster, but it's yeah. similar snares, a similar drum pattern, but one is just faster. Sounds. Then we have to then we have to go deep down and say, okay, then these people who are upset that they didn't get the proper credit have a right to be upset now. Because you're saying forget it, it evolved into something bigger. Not forget it. I'm Not just forget saying it, but it, it evolved into something bigger. But then when you listen, because like I wouldn't have known. Because in my mind, when Chop is talking, I'm thinking like, okay, what he did before, what is now is two different things. But then when you brought up GS9 and I go back and you said it, GS9 yeah. started. Yeah, the, the, they started the, this whole thing. And then now 100%. when I listen to it, I'm like, it's similarities to Sosa, the snares and the drum patterns to me. One is so, the so faster. And now, now let me ask this question. I'm just, I'm literally asking. No, sure. But to stay on topic of what the pace is, is we see in this whole wave, it's super exciting. Bobby Schmurter's picking up so much momentum. Everybody's going crazy. GS9, Bobby Schmurter, Roddy Rebel. Then come computers. While computers is going on, we now see uh, Lil Herb, because he was just Lil Herb at that point, and we seen Lil Bibby, which G Herbo and Lil Bibby start going crazy. And everything starts picking up. Now we just watching more and more people come out of the whole Chicago wave. And again, this is from a national look. In Chicago, y'all might have had 10 other rappers in between that. You get me? But from the outside looking in, we seen the first three to go. Then we seen the second, the, the next group to go was the them two. And then we started seeing Lud Foe and 600 Breezy also on like the under, like the, the underbelly of that tone. But then G Herbo caught the record with Nicki Minaj. Lil Bibby was touring crazy. Everybody was just, everybody was loving what was going on in Chicago. So a lot of elements was taken from the young niggas. A lot of the young dudes in the city started being like, yo, I'm rapping my truth, we rapping it. Like, yo, yo, we could do drill too. And that's kind of what it came from. And a lot of people keep looking at it like it's biting, it's inspiration. Chicago put on, we took it, but then we did what we supposed to do with it. It's like anything else. When you go to a store and you see a mannequin, you don't go and put on the whole outfit. You're not trying to be the mannequin. You might go, okay, cool. That sweater fall over those jeans like that. All right, cool. I'll get that sweater, but not with them jeans. Okay, cool. This is how you got to do it. Oh, them sneakers. You go into the Foot Locker, you go into Foot Action, and we all see it. Oh, the sneakers is on right there. Nah, I wouldn't do it like that. I want my socks like this. Everybody inspires from something. There's a starting idea that starts it and sparks the idea, and then now you put your own personality on it. That's just what happens. Like, I don't understand why everybody gets so sensitive off of being inspired. So straight up and down, I think the inspiration was obvious. We start rocking, but we started taking it our own way. And then comes a lot of the rappers that started going crazy in Brooklyn. You get what I mean? It starts just going crazy. Then comes the Bambinos. Then comes, you get what I'm saying? They going crazy, the Curly, the Dada. Then Tutu starts going crazy. Chef G. Chef G starts going back and forth. Uh, G's Gasoline. It starts going. We start just burfing just artists left and right. Everything starts going crazy. Now everything is going. Then you get Favi start buzzing a little bit on, a, on his own side when he was doing the records with JD and D-Sav. And then uh, you got more of dudes from far inside. We had, um, man, I'm trying to catch everybody. They had the Leaf record that was big. It was just so much activity that started going on and everybody just started picking up. You get what I'm saying? It was a lot of things. It's just this whole new movement on the underbelly of what's going on in Brooklyn. You get what I'm saying? We had... Uh, we had it's so much stuff, man. We had OP. When you seen G's Gasoline start doing records outside of it, like, it was a lot of things. Because I was bringing up everybody after This Is 50 on the same exact accord. As soon as they started doing a million views, I'm bringing them up. I'm interviewing them. They had GZ Moolah in the middle of that whole thing, too. And it's like, our sound just, we took it up a notch. And we took it and we made it our own thing. And we started having fun with it, started dancing, started vibing, started going crazy. And we talking about everything that's happening in the streets the same exact way. So everybody just started going crazy. 
everybody want to rock with it. Like, yo, nah, our version of Drill is crazy. Yo, my man got a new Drill record. And then the beat started to change. Once the beats and the production started to change, we started, that's where them elements started coming into where it's the, the UK grime and the UK Drill. Where's those kind of drums? And it shouts out to 808, shout out to Mellow, shout out to uh, Axel, shout out to all of the guys doing it up over there because it seemed like that sound started to really just match. Now, when we took the authenticity of what we was originally inspired by, now we take this sound, we mix it in with New York streets, how we love our music, how we like to dance and party, how our girls like to party, and we got Brooklyn Drill. See, once you get all of these guys that's going, and then what happens is that ops start dissing each other, and then, you know, gang beef, gang beef, op beef, op beef, and then these records start going viral. Oh, F this dude, yo, now nah, we ain't rocking with him yet. We gonna spin this block, we gonna shoot this, and then we start hearing the stories and start spilling over to the Instagrams, the socials, and then we start seeing that a lot of honest behavior was going on right behind the music, and then fans started falling in love with it. You get what I mean? To the point to where... But when niggas were coming up, niggas were still listening. We were still fucking with all the Chirac shit. Like, everything. True, true. Like, we, you know, G Herbo does records with 1090 all the time. <coughs> He's in the town. I speak to Little Bibby often. I, Dirk is always in Queens with Trav and them. Like, niggas are still showing exponential amount of love to what Facts. Chicago is. So I don't, we fuck with them. Facts. You get okay. what I'm saying? Like, we fuck with Chicago the long way. Is that not an accurate statement? It is accurate, yeah. You get what I'm saying? So it's like, and look at G Herbo's first big record, the crossover record was with Nicki Minaj. Remember he did the Shot Rock record that really ran over the top? You, you get what I'm saying? This man, yeah, we always show this yeah. love, so I feel like we give it props. We give it props, and I don't know, and that's what the problem is again. It's also with who's in power in our city. If they had more younger niggas in power in our city, the love would have been felt louder to Chicago. <laughs> When you look at what did it grow to, you start to see, yo, this turned into a movie. Brooklyn Drill starts to become this whole passion, like this whole thing that we all fell in love with. Everybody's loving it. And then comes then Favi keeps picking up records and then came Pop Smoke. Pop Smoke came and rest in peace to Pop Smoke. That's the little bro. But he came and he took it up a level. He went, he caught the deal. He put out Welcome to the Party. And that might have been like the first hit record coming out of Drill. And then it made labels be like, oh, this is real. Then he followed up with Dior. And then Fabio Foreign came with Big Drip. Then it starts changing. So now we got we got Smash Records just, just rolling out, big-ass records coming out of the town. And everybody's like, yo, oh, we could do this. Started changing. New York's temperature started opening it up. You get what I'm saying? Because while this is going on, we got the melodic dudes doing their numbers too. We got A Boogie doing their numbers, little TJ doing their numbers. Then you got the little Techers, the little JIs. We got all of these guys who's doing all of the melodic stuff at the same exact time while the drill is going on. And then New York just started giving out deals left and right. You get what I'm saying? So it all started to happen. So when everybody tries to make it seem like, yo, we took that and took that, it's inspiration. It's clear as day. Like what we grew this genre to and what Pop and Favi did mixing it in with the dancing and just making it just that fun aspect nobody else was able to do. You can't take that away from nobody in the city. Like, no one in the city could take that away. And what we did with Brooklyn Drill, we got hit records from it now. Now our records is worldwide. You get what I'm saying? Pop Smoke all over Europe going crazy. It's all on the West Coast, all in the South. Everything start going crazy, and now it's moving. So when we going back and forth to get back to the live, and... Me and Queen's Flip is going back and forth. Flip started to understand it and noticed that there were some elements of computers that kind of um, he felt was from like maybe some of the early Young Chop stuff. I didn't really hear it too much, but he started to say the elements. And what all I'm just trying to say is there might be elements from everything because it just doesn't go this genre of music than this genre of music. It kind of blends. Music is trendy. So it's like it gets a little bit, a little bit, a little bit, and then you start to see the changes get wider and wider. That's why if you look at music in references to like years, you'll see the sounds change drastically. But if you watched it literally from month to month, you'll see that it was a lot more of a slower change in how the Sonics were, were going as this. Because everybody started giving credit to look what Waka Flocka and Southside and Waka Flocka and Lex Luger did for the original drill. They the ones who started it. And then it's like, it, it's like cool. So Waka Flocka started drill. Like, no matter what anybody says, artists were doing their thing. And what drill really, really, really means to me and what I think drill means to the culture is aggressive, authentic rap. Street rap, aggressive with tempo, speaking facts. 
That's drill music to me. Now, when you add UK drill, that's their spin on it. When you add Brooklyn drill, our spin on it. And when you add Chicago drill, their spin on it. You get what I'm saying? But drill in itself is just aggressive, authentic bars. Aggressive, authentic lyrics. Aggressive, authentic sounds. That's it. So when everybody trying to fight and do this, just everybody give everybody credit. Everybody just got to understand that. And I said it in the live and it's the most valuable thing I'm saying. It's not about who did it first. It's about who made, like, who was able to make money from it. Who was able to do it the best to where that money came from it. It's not who did it first. It's who did it, who did it the best. Bronx Flip, what is Punch talking about, man? Hold on, he hold been, on. Come on, man. Well, this the shit, know. but this the shit I'm talking about because he's an instrumental person. In this situ, in the hip hop world, okay, and that's that shit misleading, bro. He no, can't. No, that's no, some. He, you can't. He gave credit though. He, he did. He did. He did to who? UK. He gave it to UK. He said Chicago. He, no, hold on. Wait. Were we listening to the, the same man? Thing? The man just. The man just told your ass. No, no. Listen what he said. Listen first, real quick. The conversation we're talking about the drill music in Brooklyn now. Like the pop smoke and the five yos like that. That drum pattern, he, that he pattern said, is the UK. The, the type of drums and how they use it is from the UK. But bro. when I asked him a question, where did the drill, who started the Brooklyn drill? He said, Bobby, right? Computers. Then I went back and I listened to Sosa. It's, to me, I said it's the same beat. So Chop did that. Computers came out what year? 14, 15. Chop did it in 12. So, but that's but it evolved, though. You understand? It's like a pro. It evolved. Everyone, listen only. Chicago is the creator of the drill sound. Everyone, listen. They are the creator. No backhanded compliments. No switch sides. No almost. They are the creator. They were the first dudes with it. We understand it. Every The whole country was a fan of what Chief Keith, what Chop, what Bandcamp, what Dirk. Herbo, Bibby, all of these niggas was doing. I don't know why nobody... I'm making it clear as hell. But Bring my charger, what please. happened is, while, while that happened, other people, young kids, young kids were influenced at that rap style. Princess. And by that rap style, I mean it like this. They were talking so authentically, boldly, even ignorantly to an extent, almost could get themselves locked up. And young kids thought that that shit was cool. And niggas started rapping about the crimes and the shit that they would yeah. do in they raps too. Now we all, as older niggas, we all hear young niggas being like, yo, bro, you saying too much on these records. Is that not a fact? We all That's say like, yo, young niggas sometimes be talking too hot. You hear me? That shit started with that bold where they naming names. I give that credit to Chicago. New York niggas took that influence, and then made it in our own shit. We were influenced. Why is that bad? Nobody is, yo, bro, we all influenced from something. Chicago niggas was doing their motherfucking thing, and we were influenced by that style of rapping. You get me? The whole country was influenced by the style of how they shot videos. How much videos you ever seen that was ever shot on an SLR in your life, like a regular camera? Chief Keith and them niggas blew that shit the fuck up. And then everybody can <coughs> on regular cameras and give a video man five hundred dollars to get a video done. Again, so do you, do you do you now, think that yeah. what happens is my fault because I'm gonna make it. GS9 comes, Rowdy Rebel, Bobby Schmurter, the whole nine comes. They have a faster feel. They dancing and they're giving their version of their truth. Bobby talking about my man's did this, my man's did that. Free all them guys. Most of them niggas is in jail now, right? Okay. That lifestyle, okay. all of that is influenced. But you think that niggas is like, yo, bro, we got to do it like this? Yo, what they did was they did they truth. They younger niggas. They were getting influenced by what was hot. So that was hot. The sound that drills changed to the full form, when we had the full blossom of the biggest that drill has been, is the production sound. That's what people are confusing. There's like lyrical style, and there's flow, and there's content, and then there's beats. The beat sound is the sound that's most popular in the UK. Not only are they taking the sounds, they're using the fucking UK producers themselves. Hold That's on, hold it. On, so on, New on. York at this present, I'm gonna finish the last point before we okay. get it back. New York is a blend of it all, as Got everywhere it. is, because I'll make this last point. Every single kid, every single kid that's out now 
are blends of everything. They're not regionally, they're not as hardcore regionally influenced as before because of the internet. So they're... You hear me? Everybody worries like, yo, I'll put the flag down first. Cool. If you put the flag down first and then the flag gets shaky and flies away in a month versus someone who puts the flag in second and that flag never moves, I don't know which flag you'd rather be. You get what I'm saying? We, we focus so much on the cloud of who's there first versus the cloud of the longevity. I just wanted to open your minds and understand it. Somebody got to be able to talk about this without trying to be, you know, without trying to play favoritism to nobody. Like, all I'm just trying to say is in New York's wave, we did our own thing. And it was that, but we inspired. Obviously, we inspired by UK. Half of the records that we did is from dudes from the UK. And that's why I tell UK producers and UK rappers to reach out. Even reach out to me. I'm trying my best to, to patch it in the way that a UK rapper could get in, in tune with like a Brooklyn rapper. I'd love to. I'd love to like put this out to where that we could really mess this and get our DJ Khaled on and start mixing records. Because it's nothing but just music. Why would we stop here? It's dumb. Like, let's level this up. You get what I'm saying? That's all I wanted to say on that whole matter. Um, shout to JoJo Capone, too. JoJo Capone jumped in. You know, everybody saying JoJo Capone, the king of Chicago. It's the, it's the OG of OGs out there. And JoJo jumped in, and JoJo wasn't really feeling what I was saying at the beginning. And then he kind of started to understand it. And then I jumped on a phone call with JoJo. And me and JoJo spoke for about an hour. And we just spoke about what's really needed. And the point that JoJo and I came together with, it needs more people that's going to speak up and talk loud for their town. Y'all need it. Like how there's a me for New York to make sure that we going crazy and we arguing and we fighting and somebody trying to get the artist deals and all of that. Y'all need one of these in every single city to where that everybody could go and go get that deal help. That's what everybody got to understand that's super needed. Because that's the key. It's all about being able to just get the deal and get everything moving. You know what I mean? Because at the end of the day, JoJo understands that yo punch. While all of this going on, Sosa, Dirk, everybody moving, they got their money. They rich already. JoJo's like, yo, I want to put on two, three other guys, four or five other guys. How do we do this, Punch? And I'm like, yo, let's get together. Let's figure it out. And that's how we're supposed to do it. New energy, thinking like OGs and thinking like, you know, just the new generation. No more dinosaur shit over here. None at all. You get what I'm saying? And then, you know, don't want to over talk nobody today. Um, just happy to be back. You know, it's Corona time. So I'll just say this, man. I don't know where we at. We about the third week into the... In, we're about the third week into the quarantine right now. And um, I just think that artists figure out where you're going to fit in and figure out how you're going to maximize this time. We've never had it like this in the world to where that we all was sitting down at the identical same moment. Figure out where you fit in and figure out how it's going to be able to benefit you because clear as day, this is something that we're going to tell our kids about. This is something that we've never seen before that we don't even understand what's really going to happen. Right now, it's about the end of March. It's not even April 1st yet. And they saying that we not there's not even a possibility of us getting out even before the month of April. So point being is figure out how to get your fans engaged. Don't let this whole month or two go by and you lost followers or you lost engagement. Figure out how to wake them up. You get what I'm saying? I'm ready to talk about whatever. I'm back. I'm not going to do this every week. I'm not going to do it every two weeks. I'm just do it anytime I feel like something to say. You get what I'm saying? It's punch. The truth hurts. If I piss somebody off at this episode, my fault. Shoot me. Like, let's just get out of our feelings and let's get into the facts. If your response to this video is I feel or I think, you're probably wrong. Start using facts. Start using facts. Start using facts. The Truth Hurts Podcast. Drop a comment. Hit the like button. Subscribe. I'm just getting my YouTuber on. Do what you do. It's the airport. Take a flight with me.